Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you're all doing well. So I've done a you versus them reading today. Well actually first of all I'm just going to talk about the lighting. It's really dark today so I'm really sorry that the light isn't better um, but there's not much I can really do about that without making it worse. So today I've done a you versus them reading and it's going to be for relationships in conflict, not necessarily simply romantic relationships, but all kinds of relationships. Whatever relationship you find yourself in conflict in, um, this is what this reading is about today. So it's typical you versus them, aside from that fact. And we're just going to see where things at, where things are at and what the chances are of resolving this issue as well and what needs to be done as well in order to resolve this issue. Okay, so let's start with your side then. So the first card out is the strength card. So I feel like for the majority of you that resonate with this side of the reading, I feel like you're very much in your power at the minute when it comes to this situation. I think you know how you feel about this person and about what's gone on and what's been the cause of the conflict as well. You know where you stand, you know you know how you feel and I feel like you're very much standing strong in your convictions. You're quite clear-headed I think about how things have gotten to the point that they've gotten to and I think that you're very much standing up for yourself and making sure that you are respected in this connection. And if you're not respected in this connection, I think that you know what you would need to do. So I don't really see an energy of you compromising to a point where you dismiss your own feelings. I think that you are very much respecting yourself in this situation. You know what you deserve you know why you feel the way that you do. And I think that you feel justified in feeling the way that you do as well. So with the strength card being here, it's really nice to see because I think that you're very much prioritizing yourself and you're saying to yourself, I know what I'm worth, I know what I deserve. And I think that you, for those of you that resonate with this, you may be the kinds of people who other people underestimate in terms of, you may come across as very gentle, very calm, very serene upon first meeting. And sometimes when you come across as that type of a person, other people underestimate your boundaries and they start acting as though you don't have any boundaries. You become a bit of a mat that people walk over. And it's only in those moments, I think, that people learn that you have this other side to you, which is that lion, right? <laughs> which is that side of you that says, do not disrespect me because if you do, the lines will be drawn, I will be gone and I won't stand for this. So I think for a lot of you, this is very much you showing this person that there is a line, there is a boundary. And if you cross that boundary, there will be consequences. And it's not about revenge or anything that's toxic. It's just about you removing yourself from the situation if you have to, in order to protect your own space and protect your energy. So I think that you're very much in a place right now where you're standing up for yourself and you're not afraid to do that. And I think it's because you've had time to understand your own perspective and to see your own perspective and where it's come from and why you feel justified in feeling the way that you do about this particular connection. So I think that, you know, again, you're in a position of strength and power right now, but I think that you're using it wisely. And I don't think that you're, you know, some people when they're in a position of power or when they feel their own power, they misuse it and they mishandle situations as a result. I don't see you doing that right now. I actually see you just being quietly strong and only using that strength when you have to, when you're backed into it, when you're forced to use it because someone's crossed a line with you. And I think that something about this particular situation 
maybe crossed a line for you and you were forced to bring out that other side that is having to stand up for yourself and you feel justified in doing that. Now, this person that you're dealing with, they got the hanged man. So it's interesting because the hanged man, first of all, you've both got major arcanas. So I do feel like this situation was significant to the both of you, as conflict often can be. When we have conflict with people that we care about, it often does leave some kind of a mark or have some kind of impact on us because of how much we care, right? Now, this person, I would say that they, they're, they're a bit stuck right now. They're a bit stuck. I feel like they may try to look at things from your point of view, but always come back to the same perspective every time they try. Does that make sense? So it's almost as if they try to look at things from the, in the same way you are in order to see your side of things. But even though they're trying to do that, they still kind of come back to the same point, which is their own, which makes them stuck. So they may have a bit of tunnel vision right now when it comes to this particular situation with you and the conflict that's been had. It's almost as if they... They can't see beyond their own point of view. And that's a problem, right? Because when there's conflict, in order to resolve it, we have to be able to understand the other person's point of view, or at least try to. We have to try and put ourselves in, in the shoes of the other person. It doesn't mean that that will necessarily be successful. It doesn't mean that we will be able to understand where that person's coming from. But we need to try to do that. We need to put in our best efforts when the connection that we're dealing with is significant to us. And I feel like this person's on a bit of a loop with that. And it's almost as if they're, they have quite a closed mind when it comes to what this conflict between the two of you has been about. And it's keeping them stuck. And I feel like because their perspective is quite limited it's also made it difficult for this person to decide what to do within this situation, right? Because if you can't, if you can't see beyond your own interpretation of what's happened, then in order to, re that's going to make it difficult for you to resolve it with that person. And it's also going to make it difficult for you to know what steps to take in order to do that because you can't see beyond your own point of view anyway. So I feel like this person's a bit stuck. They feel stuck. They feel like the situation perhaps is quite stagnant. And I'm not sure they feel ready to take action, particularly if you feel like they should be the ones to take it and to take initiative. I don't feel like that's something that they're ready to do. And they won't be ready to do until they've actually come to the conclusion that there is another perspective to their own, which they haven't done yet, as much as they might try. I feel like this person thinks that you and them are kind of polar opposites when it comes to this particular conflict, that you're at opposite ends of the spectrum. And it's very difficult for them to kind of slide over to your side because they're as much as you're strong in your convictions, I also feel like this person's strong in theirs, but I think it's in a different way because I can look I can look at this card here and I can see that, you know, that that split down the middle of the face between the lion and the human, it kind of gives that interpretation of I can see both sides here. I can put myself in the other person's shoes. Whereas this feels more like I'm kind of just stuck in my own. And I feel like this person as well, they may be looking at things upside down. Imagine literally being upside down and how different everything would look and how unclear everything would look. You know, if we 
turn ourselves upside down, all the blood rushes to our head and makes us dizzy and <laughs> nauseous, right? So in that particular situation, we're not going to be able to look at things with a clear perspective, of which I don't think this person is. But it's something that I feel like they will have to kind of untangle themselves from and get themselves out of and, and kind of turn themselves the right way up in order for them to see differently. I don't think anyone's going to be able to push them to do that. Now, in terms of what both of you would need to do in order to resolve the conflicts, but a feeling, a challenge in doing so. In other words, this is what you should do, but you might be struggling to do in this situation. You have the three of wands. <laughs> so what is sometimes the hardest thing to do when there is conflict in a situation is wait, right? <laughs> is do nothing. Sometimes that is the most difficult thing to do. When we care, and when we're hurting about a connection in our lives, we're so, we sometimes feel inclined to kind of push to resolve things by talking more, sending more messages, trying to reach out to that person, trying to, you know, explain our point of view, trying to resolve things that way. But sometimes all that can actually do is make things worse. Sometimes the best thing to do is to just stand still and wait and see, particularly if you have already given your perspective, if you've already said what you have wanted to say, and at this point are just repeating it, then it's important that in those moments, okay, we've said what we wanted to say, now we just need to sit back and wait and see what this person does or does not do, or what they take away from what I've said, you know, and, and that again is difficult for you, that's what you're struggling to do at this time is to wait wait and see. And it is difficult because again, when we're passionate about something, it's natural to want to take more action, not less. But yet sometimes in those situations, the hardest thing to do is the right thing to do for you as much as for the situation. Because sometimes when we feel like we're kind of a bit of a broken record because we keep saying the same things over and over and over again or trying to find different ways of communicating the same thing to try and get through to someone. Again, we're just adding fuel to the fire at that point. We're prolonging the conflict, not realising that sometimes the things that we say can take a while to digest. And that, again, could explain this person's energy right now with the hanged man you know, it could just be taking a while to be digested, what's been said, what's happened. And that's normal. That's actually okay. You know, it, the things that we say to each other, particularly difficult conversations, all that information doesn't always seep in immediately. Sometimes if it's a difficult conversation or we've, we've received some, you know, challenging information or information that disrupts our peace and our energy we need a minute to just allow it to set in allow it to digest and, and for us to accept it and and understand what's actually being said to us some people need that time to just kind of go away and allow that to go in we don't always get there immediately right and I think that that's kind of what this person has been doing as well is trying to allow that information to sink in. And also as well, if there has been kind of a big conflict here, sometimes it's just giving space to allow things to calm down. Because again, when we're in the heat of the moment and we're saying things back and forth because we're our emotions are heightened and we're angry and we're upset and we're hurting. And so we just say more and more things, you know, once that's happened, it it can really drain your energy and you just need to take a step back in order to regain some energy and again, allow what has happened to really sink in and digest and take the best things away from that conversation or that disagreement. Now, 
this person, what is this person struggling to do? We've got the Ace of Pentacles. So this is funny to me, right? <laughs> so you're, what you're struggling to do that would actually help the conflict or resolve the conflict is the Three of Wands. So wait, wait and see, see what happens, do nothing. This person's got the Ace of Pentacles, which is more about, especially in this deck, it's, it's more about an offering, right? A gesture. So it may actually be, especially if you feel like you've said your part or you've spoken up more or you've kind of expressed yourself more, this person may not have had their time to do that. Or if they were the ones to initially cause the conflict or cause the problem, you know, naturally it comes down to that person to sort of try and resolve things and make things right. But that could be very much what they're struggling to do is either give their perspective or point of view regarding the conflict, regarding how they feel, or apologise for what their part that they played in it. So I feel like that is something that this person's doing. And the Ace of Pentacles, you know, Pentacle energy is known to be slower moving. And it's very much about planning. So I feel like this person maybe does a lot of thinking about what they're going to say, but never actually acts on it. You know, they might sit and think about what they might do or what they could do, but they never actually take action and make that happen. And this is stalling the whole situation because there's things that I feel like this person probably does need to say, especially if it is an apology or it's um, some kind of acknowledgement of what you've said and perhaps just some sort of gesture to show that this person cares or this person has recognised your feelings and what you've got had to say to them. But they're really struggling to do that because they're stuck on their perspective. So it's keeping this whole situation stagnant. Now, in terms of what actions you're both going to take moving forward, you got the Four of Swords, which I think is probably your best bet. You know, this is very much about healing, healing from the conflict, you know, taking a step back and starting to take care of yourself and your own emotions. The Four of Swords comes after the Three of Swords. So it comes after a period of heartbreak, hurt feelings, you know, disappointment. And when those things happen in life, particularly when dealing with other people, we do need a minute to rest. We need a minute to gather ourselves and get ourselves together and build our strength back up. And again, digest what's happened because when things happen like this and there's a disagreement that's led to some kind of separation or some kind of distance, it does, we can't be expected to just be okay immediately. You know, if it's important to us, it will leave a mark. It will do some damage. And it's just giving yourself that time to really process what's happened here. And I think, you know, to give yourself a break as well, because obviously conflict is quite draining and exhausting. And you do just need some time to rebuild that energy before taking more action or taking steps forward. So this is going to be about you probably not taking much action towards this person going forward and just giving yourself time to digest what took place here and reflect and be kind to yourself and give yourself something that you need that perhaps you weren't receiving from this person. You know, and that's that's where our power lies a lot of the time is when we're expecting to receive something from another person or the people in our lives and we don't get it. That can be very disheartening and it can really impact us negatively until we realise we were capable of giving that to ourselves the entire time, you know, and just that kind of gentle reminder that, OK, if this particular person isn't going to be that way with you then you can be that way with yourself. 
Now, this person also doesn't look like they're going to take much action going forward. Sorry, I'm just going to... My laptop has this habit of just clicking off every now and again. Eight of Cups. So this person is going to start walking away or is going to just get some space. Now, the thing about the Eight of Cups is that, yes, it's a card of walking away. It's a card of leaving something behind. But we don't know for how long, <laughs> right? The one thing about the Eight of Cups is that, yes, it is a walking away. It is getting some distance. But we don't know if this person's going to suddenly turn around at some point and start walking back. You know, this person could at any point turn around and come back. Now, that's not to say that I want you to sit and wait for this person to do something or take some action towards you. You should continue to live your life. But it's just a point of saying that whenever you see the Eight of Cups in a reading, I think it's always important to remember that just like any other card in tarot, it could be temporary. You know, it's a temporary, all of these are temporary energies and can, you know, can quickly change. So don't necessarily see this as a complete final ending to the situation unless you want it to be. This can easily change, but for now, because we're only talking about the near future, this person's probably going to get some space and get some distance. And I actually think it's probably what's best for both of you. And it makes sense after a conflict, like I was just saying. I mean, how many conflicts have you had in your life where you had a disagreement, you had an argument with someone, you didn't see eye to eye, but then you went into your own corners, you went into separate parts of your life, you got some space from each other, and then a few days, a few weeks, a few months, in some cases, a few years later, you come back together, you resolve the issue, you move past it. But that space can sometimes be the saving grace because if it's early days, if it's fairly soon after the conflict, you haven't had time to calm down. Your energy hasn't had time to relax. And so if you were to have a conversation now, it's very likely that the heat will rise again and that conflict will continue. Whereas sometimes if you go into your separate corners, you give yourself time to reflect, calm down, perhaps try and see the other person's point of view and perspective, it can be beneficial to the relationship. So it really depends on your circumstances as individuals as to which way this is probably going to go. For now, you're going into your separate corners and it's probably the wisest choice. It's probably the best decision for the both of you because things have been heated. There's been this disagreement and you're both needing some time to just try and understand the other person. And it can be really difficult when we have personal connections with people to do that sometimes. But I think that you are definitely succeeding more than the other person. But it doesn't mean that that person won't get there. It just might mean they need a bit more time to get there. And through separation and a bit of distance, it's likely or more likely that that will happen. Now, your advice makes a lot of sense given the context of the reading, you're deserving. So when we have conflict with people and we have a disagreement, we feel often that we're unappreciated, we feel disrespected sometimes, we feel criticised, you know, lots of negative emotions can come from conflict. And sometimes because it's a personal or close relationship to us, it makes us doubt ourselves, it makes, it can almost seep in and make us believe what's been said in that conflict. And so I feel like your deserving has come out just to remind you that, you know, you des first of all, you deserve to be treated with respect. You know that saying that constantly goes around social media? that's basically like the the moment you feel like you deserve more, you do. It's that kind of a phrase that you really need to pay attention to right now because there's truth to it. 
You know, if you feel like you deserve to be treated with more respect, then you probably do. And it's okay to take a step back from people that aren't currently respecting you. It says, accept the good, you deserve it, and reject the bad, you deserve more. So if you feel like someone's bringing a lot of drama into your life and a lot of upset and chaos, it's okay to just say, you know what, (laughs) draw a line and take a step back because you want more than that, you want better than that. And it's also okay, regardless of the, the circumstances, it's okay to understand where your boundaries lie and what kind of relationships you do and do not want in your life. And this particular situation could just be making that very clear to you at this point in time. But it's about not forgetting what you're worthy of and what what kind of treatment you're deserving of. See it as a reminder, because we all need one sometimes, right? It's okay to stand up for yourself. It's okay to have a different opinion to someone else. It's okay to make that boundary clear to someone when they cross the line. But the one thing that we can't expect is that other people will agree with us and see things from our point of view. That's on them. That's something that you have to hand over to them. And so if they're not getting it, if they're not seeing it from your perspective, there's not much else you can do other than take care of you and strive for better. Okay, so I am going to leave it there, but I really hope that was helpful. It's really nice talking to you all again, and I will speak to you again soon. Bye.